especially boundary conditions or the numerical settings, where do you see the biggest problems there? What do you think in, in your case, maybe when you started, what was the biggest issue for you? Was it more boundary conditions? But I think it's more intuitive, right? You have an inlet, you have an outlet, you have the walls. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of physical, you understand it. But what about the numerics? What do you think there? And uh, is both are uh, very difficult because I I, uh, I know there is uh, there are boundary conditions fixed value zero gradient and mm -hmm. uh, new T wall function K Q R wall functions and then uh, newcomers are confused by them. I mean, after a while, you get the combination of the pressure boundary condition and the velocity boundary condition, but still for newcomers, it's difficult to understand, especially turbulent inlet. Who that that, that is. That is uh, what can be a bit difficult to grasp, but actually it is very simple. And for example, I am currently on a simulation project on Patreon where I really like to concentrate on the case setup and initial and boundary conditions. So it is really uh, just test those. And I really try to uh, describe that in, on YouTube and also on Patreon. Uh, what are uh, what is behind the boundary conditions? And uh, I think the boundary conditions are nicely documented in OpenFOAM. So if you find out the path where you can find the boundary conditions in SRC and then finite volume, then you can. There is a, a big collection of boundary conditions, and if you open up the header file, there is usually a very good description of what those boundary conditions do. Mm -mm. Now the numerics that is a bit. Uh, more advanced and I mean for newcomers it really just boils down to first or second order discretization schemes because everything else is a lot more complex and so upwind or linear upwind or limited linear and uh, for that I, my advice would be just take a look at what I use in my videos or what the tutorial the open form tutorials use and then try to use those rather than uh, and uh, test them first upwind is always a good idea as a starting point but of course uh, upwind can still make a big uh, error uh, recently i had a project where uh, uh, the difference between first and second order was 17 percent in pressure yeah. drops so uh, so you should take a look at the uh, uh, discretization schemes and um, um, so you might have heard of grid dependent study so mm -hmm. you yeah, refine sure. the mesh and then you see whether the, your results converge to a mesh independent result. The same can be done also for the numerical settings. So to see what is the change in pressure drop or, your, or the outflow value, whatever you are interested in, and then change the numeric settings and see how they, uh, whether they change. And also, uh, what is also very important and uh, the number of iterations, and not a lot of people talk about that, the outer corrector, then the end correctors and the non-orthogonal correctors in the pimple loop. So if you have the time, then it's just one setting. It's just one number or two numbers that you change and then you make a parameter set uh, study, especially what I mentioned with a small case where you already set up your physics and you have a small case setup where you can run the simulation in 15 minutes, then you can run 10 simulations with different numbers of uh, outer correctors. And then see, uh, do those, uh, the, the increase of iteration number change your results? So um, mm. other than that, everything else is a more advanced uh, stuff. So then you really have to go into the literature about the uh, matrix solvers or the source code itself. And I think that a lot of people will have the time for that. So what people might have time for is this kind of grid dependent study. So this numerical study where they ch on a simple geometry, you can kind of test w what is uh, the limit, where what is the best compromise between runtime and the accuracy.